did, did start, like Terry said, uh, just before he came in, I got involved in this. And uh, my whole thing with Second Life was, you know, I, I do, I'm the director of online learning for the college, and I, I really felt that there was something there. Something, first of all, there was something missing from our online students, like something we were doing before. The sense of presence, the sense of uh, community that just lacked by all of these students sitting in their living rooms by themselves, thinking, I just had this picture in my brain. And uh, as I was, uh, <laughs> I laughed about this with people from uh, various places, but the, the, as I was driving around on my tractor listening to a podcast one day, something that uh, somebody was referring to Second Life, and so I jumped in, and uh, and I found this incredible community, and the, the, the neat part was, the first person that I walked into, just on the mainland of Second Life, was a, was a dean at Cornell, and I thought, man, this is something. This, is, this, this whole <laughs> community of Second Life is really someplace I have to be. Um, so, um, I joined it, got Terry involved, Terry, Terry and I, uh, worked this, the, um, the whole project with SUNY Live, um, and we've gone farther than that now, though, um, are, am I really that quiet? Is that what everybody's telling me? I can, uh, I can turn myself up. Th there's still something missing. The SUNY Live project taught us an awful lot of lessons. We learned, um... We learned the lessons of how not to bring people into the same room and try to log everybody into Second Life for the first time, um, because the because of the whole you could only have so many logins from the same IP address and all those kind of little projects we had. Um, but we also learned that really Second Life was a was an environment that because we're taking people to a different place, a, a new dimension, a new world, um, they needed their hands held an awful lot more than we certainly were prepared to. Um, that was a that was a tough lesson, especially when I had I had my personally three or four classes going in Second Life at the time, um, and somebody referred to before about the students' reaction. Oh, I think it was Penn State. Um, students' reaction has been fabulous for this. They just love the fact that we get them so uh, so involved, and they they finally felt that that thing. And I still can't put my hand on exactly what it was. Teaching presence, social presence, whatever the presence is, it's like a virtual presence, I guess. Um, that uh, that created that excitement within the students. They were so tough at the beginning, and every one of the times, every time I've taught in Second Life, um, that uh, the next part that we're going to talk about, um, they're gonna, oh, and I pass this off to Alex, is that we, we think we've come up with a solution for that. Um, we have a solution just looking for some grants, I guess. Um, but in the meantime, I've actually gone on and tried to take this to a different level. Like, like Terry referred to before, um, I did get involved with Desi, and I have Desi's. Uh, I have a couple of Desi's builds on my islands. I've also done some community outreach, trying to bring the community together by bringing a local radio station in to broadcast live from our Finger Lakes island, which has been an incredible experience for our students. Um, but I've also gone off into other places. I'm also teaching a class right now on uh, Tolkien, using Lord of the Rings Online, um, building the kinships, and again trying to build that social presence with the students. Um, and uh, Lord of the Rings has, has been another tremendous experience. It's really based on the premise that Desi created with Literature Alive, but instead of us having to recreate something in Second Life, um, our Lotro project, uh, we build the kinships, put the class together in kinships, and are working our way through Lord of the Rings in virtual worlds, in movies, and uh, through the books, and comparing and contrasting the different medias. Um, and it based on our experiences here in Second Life, and it's just been... An, Incredible experience. You know, we try very hard to get our students to do experiential learning and, and, and spend some time um, actually feeling, especially in literature, it's very difficult. Um, but the Literature Live project, now the Lotro project, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm going to take it to the next uh, step and I'm going to pass it off to Alex, or Alejandra, um, to talk about how we think that uh, we might be able to take this to the next level on an institutional basis, on a large-scale basis. So, Alex? Are you there? Maybe not. She's been bouncing in and out. Um, 
I have been uh, having some technical difficulties. I don't really know why. Um, so if I cut out, um, I apologize in advance. And, and if I do, I just want to thank um, the uh, conference organizers and everyone involved in uh, setting this conference up. This is a fantastic uh, event and opportunity. And I'm uh, really thrilled to be here uh, to represent the State University of New York. And, um, Terry, uh, or Crash, uh, told you a little bit about SUNY when he first came on. Um, it is the largest state university system in uh, the United States, and uh, as he said, uh, 64 campuses. I um, am the associate director of the SUNY Learning Network, and the SUNY Learning Network serves um, as a, a, a hub for the online teaching and learning initiatives at, at SUNY um, through the SUNY Learning Network. And, and there are about 30 campuses uh, that have membership, 30 of the 64 campuses that have membership in SLN. Uh, SLN um, helps the campuses to deliver fully online. Uh, I think we may have lost her. Let me just see if she's still in the group. Okay. okay, like I said, I can talk forever. So until she comes back, let me say that um, Alex is part of an incredible program because what they did is they developed um, a system-wide support for our distance learning that started back in the late 90s. And it created a group or presence, I should say, that was SUNY-wide, started off the idea of um, building a distance learning course based on sound instructional design. <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't be news to any of us, but it was to people um, back in those days. And at the time, there were no course management systems they really liked. So they built the SUNY Learning Network based on a Lotus No Space system, homegrown system, and built in good instructional design. As it's, it evolved considerably, as I said, 30 plus campuses now use the SUNY Learning Network system. Um, and many of the courses throughout SUNY's online learning program are based on the instructional design principles that they t teach because throughout SUNY anyone can attend an instructional design course that starts them from square one to build an online course. If she comes back, hopefully what she would have talked about is the idea with Second Life when, the, when SLN bought an island was that they could take the exact same model that they used to build Second Life. Actually, this is the right slide still because I'm going to talk for Alex. Let me see, unless you had another one. Let me go check. The idea was to apply the same principles that we applied to developing online courses to using Second Life. We have a extremely large, cohesive group of online learners within SUNY. We have in a distance learning program. Um, just like Penn State was talking about though, um, bringing community, the sense of community to those online learners, Second Life is a natural next step. So the idea was we actually put in a grant, um, wasn't funded, I think there was um, 10 funded out of hundreds that were put in, um, but the idea was to take the same model that was used to push out distance learning and apply it to Second Life. And that is to find an instructional designer and an interested faculty member on a campus, pair them up, bring them to a training program, give them some first steps, get them going, um, support them through the development of a course or the use of Second Life in that course, and then turn them loose. And in the end, what you end up with is 20 plus campuses that have an instructional designer trained in the best practices in Second Life, a faculty member trained in the same thing, and hopefully generated some excitement. Um, at the same time, our the SLN program includes a help desk for our online students, a single number anyone in SUNY, part of the SUNY Learning Network can call and ask questions, using that same help desk to support our online students. Looks like Alex is back now. Alex, if you can hear me, I just gave a quick uh, um, overview of uh, your online learning program and talked about the instructional design model that you wanted to apply to Second Life as well. Are you back with us? Okay, if she joins, okay, great. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. 